Hello, I'm gonna show you a bit how to use the Orpheus Visual Curry Builder. And the thing, first thing that you have to notice is this thing over here, this big blue button where you can select different entity types. Let's see, I'm looking for chemical compounds. I'll select chemical compound here. There is a description if you hover over it. And I want a chemical compound that binds to a specific protein, let's say. And this protein, let's say that I, I don't know the name of the protein, but I do know the name of the gene that encodes for this protein. So I can go here and search protein where plus. Okay, so I want a chemical compound that binds a protein and this protein is encoded by the gene and I know that I want the gene EGFR. So I'm gonna try and find here EGFR. Uh, the search currently looks for, runs some Sparkle queries and tries to get it. So it might take a while before it finds your gene, but it will find it if you uh, use the official gene symbol. And all right, so I want chemical compounds to buy the protein uh, encoded by EGFR. I can see the Sparkle query here, but I don't need to understand it. That's the whole idea of the visual query builder. I can execute it and voila, now I have a, a number of compounds that are known to bind the EGFR protein. These were either from Wikidata or from different sources that build the Orpheus graph. Uh, you may look and recognize some uh, drug names, so some com chemical compounds that we know they are part of drugs, and some that are not. So, for example, sodium chloride, it does bind the EGFR protein, yes, but it's not really a chemical compound that is active in a drug. So, let's say that I want to look for chemical compounds that are active ingredients in drugs. But any drug, I don't want to specify the, the drug, so I can just click this keyword any, and this little eye here, I can select if I want or not this variable to be returned, and I do want to know which drugs are here. So voila, now we have this number of different compounds that are connected to EGFR in the Orpheus graph, and the different, uh, drugs that y use them as ingredients all right so now maybe i don't want that maybe i want the opposite of that maybe i only want the chemical compounds that are not active ingredients in any drug well i can do that in the visual query builder i can just go in this uh this buttons here this sliding buttons and select the option not exists so what i'm telling this sparkle Engine now is that I want a chemical compound, compound that binds a protein encoded by EGFR, and this chemical compound is not an active ingredient in any drug, as far as the graph is aware, right? It may be an active ingredient, but it's not represented in the graph. This is very important to, to keep in mind as the, the graph is growing and getting better and representing better reality, but it may not. Uh, cover everything yet. So if something not exists in the graph, it may exist elsewhere. Uh, Alright, so with that being said, now we are looking for a chemical compound that not exists in any drug. I'm telling you to return the drug, but as you can see, there is none here. Uh, so for example, sodium chloride is here as it's not really the active compound of any uh, drug that we are aware of. All right, that's cool. You can do a lot of different science queries, biological queries in this graph. You can uh, explore all this range of uh, ent biological entities. We have disease gene, a cell type, a chemical compound, but now we can see also something else. We have uh, this meta-scientific, this, uh, let's say, scientific community-related kind of entities. For example, clinical trial. We can look for clinical trials that are related to a chemical compound that binds to a protein, and this protein is encoded by EGFR. So you can do all this this kind of uh, elaborate queries. You can see that it's, very, it's much faster now the second time you look for it because it's, it kind of saves, it's smart, saves the mechanism. And this clinical trial, uh, yeah, Let's, let's just look for that and run and, and see how the query is looking. It's looking already pretty uh, complicated here. I'm going to run it. And yeah, now we have a, a number of different clinical trials that looked at these drugs. And let's see that I want also 
the diseases, well, which diseases they were dealing with. So I can click this any keyword and now I'm looking for any disease and by clicking in the eye I can toggle it on or, on or off. Now I want clinical trials related to GJ4 by this chain and I want to know which diseases they were tackling. Alright, so some were tackling adenocarcinoma, this one was even tackling HIV or unexpected and some other cancers and so on. So you can already grasp a lot of the different uh, statuses of the literature, clinical trials, and, and, and let's say that I want to do something else. I want clinical trials, but I only want recent clinical trials. So the one that started in the past, let's say, two years. And I can edit that and see, let's see. Okay, so now we have a number of clinical trials here, but I also want to know the date, so I can toggle the date here. And voila, so these are all the recent clinical trials that tested some chemical compounds that binds the protein coded by EGFR. So it's a fairly complicated query. I am sure that you couldn't search it easily anywhere in the web like this, certainly not on Google. And, and it's already it's, brings a lot of power to, to the hands of the, the users.